Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Happy September. Happy Woo September. The Ember Moats are here. I'm not expecting everybody else to be excited about that, but that is just, I always look forward to the Ember Moats. So that's a September, that's a, that's an October, that's a November, and that's a December. So the Burr Moats, they're actually Burr Moats. So, but I'm looking. It burned because it's not as hot. Because yeah, to, yeah, that's true. And, and you know, big boys like me like that, but that's okay. I do too. I like a little cool. And it's all good. We're blessed. We're blessed. Thank the Lord. God is good. Appreciate y'all being here. Uh, Billy Dates will be here tonight. Please come back at six o'clock. Uh, good time, in God's house. We have got the Tuesday night service seven o'clock. That's been a real blessing, and thankful for that. And also, uh, homecomings next week. That'll be 11 o'clock. Got two singing groups, Visiting Creature and Reward E. Hallelujah. That's a good day. So, but we're looking forward to that. And uh, please come support that. Please bring somebody and bring something to eat. And, and, and just come and participate. We appreciate you. Love y'all. Um, prayer request this morning. Please remember uh, the church. And uh, next week, hope and forget things for homecoming. Yeah. Remember Josh, he's still at school traveling. Thankful Nicole and the boys and Josh traveling this week and home safe. Remember the homeless folk. That's always good to pray for. People ain't got stuff. Yes, sir. Pray for uh, John's brothers, his work family, all the family, please. Remember the folks dealing with mental health issues. Remember the folks at school, uh, the hospital, firefighters. Remember Miss Martha. Yeah, I'm Miss Miss Martha, she's a blessing to me. Remember all the Blevins family. Remember. Uh, uh, I told Terry this week, Terry Dakota, that's the Lord bless us on them. Uh, remember my friend Brianna, remember my friend Jamie, friend Greg. Um, that's some blessings on them. Um, remember the church family. Church family, please remember them definitely. Ask some prayers and blessings on them. Remember, yep, remember Jay Dixon, Lisa Brown, please remember them. Yeah. Pray for them. Good to see Kim this morning. Good to be here. Thank you everyone for the prayer. Yeah. Miss Glenn. Yeah, yes. and, and pray, pray, pray for Glenn as well. Pray, yes. pray for Mom. Yeah, yeah, that. Anybody else this morning? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Church man. Death. Death. Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Um, they're doing. Uh, it's back there on the uh, board. There's a uh, benefit singing. It's the uh, 15th over at uh, West Side, which is on 18, heading toward. Uh, it's the crosses. The church got three crosses up on the hill. Um, heading out of town, heading, it's in town. It's, but, it's behind the old city tire, right? Yeah, behind the old city tire. There you go. Thank you, honey. Uh, they're having a benefit scene um, over there on the 15th to help some folks out. Good to see you this morning. Bless you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Really do. Um, anybody else this morning? Prayer request. Remember the situation with Angie's house? Yeah. Pray for that. Remember all my family. All, 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 all. all Kim's family. Yes. Always, always. The prayer for us. Um, anybody else this morning? 
Can he unspoken on this wonderful morning? Let's pray this morning. Lord Jesus, we love and pray you. Thank you, Lord, for grace. Thank you, Lord, for mercy. Thank you, Lord, for love. Thank you, Lord, for provision. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us. God, you're so good to us. Lord Jesus, I ask you to touch these, touch these prayer requests, Lord God. Lord, there's such a need, Lord Jesus, for you and all you do, Lord Jesus. Lord God, you see the, you see the things, Lord God, that we pray for. You see the things we request. You see the things, Lord, drawing near to our heart. Lord Jesus, I just ask for a blessed day, bless these requests, and let everything be uplifted to you. And God, we give you praise and again. Thank you by faith and all the things you've blessed us with and all the things you've blessed us to come. We worship you, Lord, and thank you for the world of the month. By name, amen. Everything's gonna be alright. 
You are the strength when I am weak. The only one who leads my soul to perfect peace. And I will sing my way through the night. The words that bring me back to life. Everything's gonna be Same 150. I love this song. He's the dearest friend I ever had. When I was drifting out in sin, I had no peace, no joy within. But Jesus came and made me glad. The dearest friend I ever had. He saved my soul, bless his name. I'll never forget the day he came. He makes me glad when I am sad. The dearest friend I ever had. When Jesus comes, the way is bright. For he's the way, the truth, the life. He cheers me on when I am sad. The dearest friend I ever had. He saved my soul, bless his name. I'll never forget the day he came. He makes me glad when I am sad. The dearest friend I ever had. Hear this, oh sir, come to Jesus now. At his dear feet, just talk about. He'll save your soul and make you glad. The dearest friend I ever had. 
He saves my soul, bless his name. I'll never forget the day he came. He makes me glad when I am sad. The dearest friend I ever had. I'll sing that chorus again. He saves my soul, bless his name. I'll never forget the day he came. He makes me glad when I am sad. The dearest friend I ever had. He's the dearest friend any of us will ever have. Praise the Lord. Five steps of holy living. Five steps of holy living. I tell you, I, I like checklists more than I like things I can look at and say, I did this, did that, did this, did that. Check them off, check them off, check them off. I like that. That makes me happy. That gives me a sense of purpose. That gives me a sense of fulfillment. I can look back. I did this today. I did that today. We left house this morning, Dennis. I was like, we're at Sunday school this morning. We're at church this morning. Go come home. Go eat. Probably watch race. Hang on couch a little bit. Come back at night, 6 o'clock. Go have more church. Praise the Lord. Got a plan. I got a plan. Go watch football game tonight. Happy about that. Football season's back. Your preacher, Pastor Fred, he's happier now. That's his sport. Life's good. I hung out on the couch yesterday. Watched, watched football all day. That was excellent. Praise the Lord. I know there's some people like, man, just wasted the whole day. Hug my neck. It'd be good. Love y'all. Blessed in the Lord. But there's five steps. I want to give you steps. You can go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm doing this. You can go to the Lord and you say, Lord, I'm doing this. You, you know yourself. You're living a holy life. We need to live in prayer. And Lord God, you bless this sermon. Thank you, Jesus. Love you, Lord. Praying to God attaches one heart and mind to Christ Jesus through wonderful conversation with God. Well, for without his spirit, we have no hope to succeed. Prayer kicks temptations down and helps our mind by directing our thoughts to praising and pleasing God. Hear that this morning. Praying to God attaches our hearts and minds to Christ. If I'm wanting Sarah's attention, I'm not going to say, Hey, Doc, you see what I'm saying? If I want, God, if I want my bride's attention, I'm going to go to her. I'm going to talk to her. I'm going to get near her. We're about to talk. You see? So in this walk, this Christian life, you say, Well, God ain't doing this. God ain't doing that. How often do you talk to him? How often do you go to him? How much time are you spending? Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need you. It says right here, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18, rejoice evermore. Praise God. I'm happy it's September. I'm happy being house of God. I'm happy to see y'all this morning. I'm happy to have a word to preach. Praise God. I'm dearest friend I ever had. I'm thankful for my salvation. I'm thankful for the Spirit. I got reasons to rejoice. Praise God. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Some people get caught up on that. You mean I'm supposed to have 24 hours, 7 days a week, every minute that I'm alive and awake, praying. That ain't what that's saying. Okay? Now, I would hope and I would, I would really desire that there's not a person in this church this morning that doesn't think that they're not able to call me or contact me or reach out to me or think that, hey, Tim cares for me, Tim prayed for me, all that stuff, all that stuff. I hope that's in your mind. I hope that's in your hearts. I hope you don't believe that. But this is the same guy who just less than three or four minutes ago talked about, I sent him a catch yesterday, this. I watched football all day. I was so happy. I had a hard week. I said to myself, I ain't going to do anything today. Boy, I checked that off. I, I sighed about that one. I didn't do a lot yesterday. But even through all that, my love, my thoughts, my connections and relationships, everybody in here, were still constant. 
You see, that's what that is, pray without ceasing. Lord knows he has my heart, he has my soul, he has my mind. I'm redeemed, I'm bought with the price, and I can slip in and out all day long. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, need your help here. Lord, I got friends. Lord God, need you to go in. Lord God, send your spirit over here. That relationship don't change. We're praying without ceasing. At a moment's notice, I, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know how that comes about? That comes about with knowing. That comes about with communication. That comes about with relationship. See, it's no big thing if I walk up to y'all here, shook hands, hug me, tell you I love you, tell you I appreciate you guys. No big deal. We got a relationship, okay? Now, if I was going down food line, all right, and there's somebody I never know, never talked to, maybe they're over there buying bread, and I just walk up to them and say, I love you, start hugging on them. I appreciate you so much. They'd be like, that boy has fallen off the turnip truck and he needs some help. You see, there's no relationship. But when you have a relationship, you can have that continual, continual going on, that continual relationship. It goes, it's without ceasing. The love of Christ don't end and his spirit that's within us it shines forth. It spreads on. It don't end. And everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything. I had somebody near and dear to me yesterday while I was sitting on couch watching football. I had somebody near and dear to me yesterday call me on someone else's phone. And when I looked up, I'm like, why is this person calling me? My first thought was, oh no, something bad has happened. Because this person never calls me. Okay? And I'm like, oh, something's happened. And I pick up the phone. I was like, hey, hey, I'm borrowing so and so's phone. Somebody stole my phone. That's why I'm calling you on such and such phone. Just letting you know. And I felt bad for that individual because they mean a lot to me. And Nicole, at the same time, I was thankful that it was just a phone. You know what I'm saying? Because when that face first popped up, I thought, uh-oh, somebody, somebody dead. Somebody's in the hospital. Something bad just happened. Because this person don't call. Okay? And I'm like, okay, okay. And they were bummed out. And I'll tell you something. This little critter right here, if I lost this thing, I'd be bummed out too. Okay? All right? I connect a lot of things, a lot of places. This is good for church. This is good for work. This is good for my personal life. I'm connected to this thing. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, that's a whole other debate. There's times I'm excited about that thing. There's times I'm like, I just need to bury that thing out in the yard and be done with it. Okay? But, what does it say? In everything, give thanks. And why should we give thanks this morning? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Dennis, you know yourself, you try to teach people, you try to show people how to do certain things. If they're thankful, they're more apt to learn. But if you try to teach somebody, somebody, they already know what they're doing, or they think they already know what they're doing. Woo! Has anybody ever been a preacher, try to explain uh, 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 a Bible verse to somebody that was already telling you what that Bible verse already meant and you be the preacher like you ain't got a clue what this means and you got to hold some bad teaching you ever been there I get that about once a week honestly that's about a once a week deal with somebody 
They'll start shouting off, spouting off so like, look, wait a minute. That ain't what that means, honey. That ain't what that means, brother. That ain't what that means, sis. It's an interesting spot, sir. It's interesting. I'll just say interesting. But the Bible's telling me to give thanks. Woo! You know why I should give thanks for that? Because I got an opportunity to help someone grow closer to the Lord. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. You and I had that opportunity once a week. And I told James to remind me. And by telling him, I did remember that don't always happen. Last week's sermon on the back of it. This week I got the fruits of the Spirit and I got the armor of God. I really didn't even talk about the back of the sheep this week. That's good to hang up on the wall too, by the way. But anyway, I said on the back of last week's sermon, invite one person you've never invited to church come to church. Invite one person. And boy, your pastor, boy, he 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 just hit the mark. He invited one person he never invited before. <laughs> Mail back. I checked that off. I told James, I said, I'm not going to ask anybody if they did that or not during the sermon. And I'm not. I'm not looking for hands or whatever. What I'm saying is, is that going back to this verse and everything, give thanks for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. If I've got something to give thanks for, I'm probably going to let somebody know that. I got blessed this week three or four times. Good blessings as I would expect. Praise the Lord. And I'm thankful for the blessings. And at the same time, I heard two or three things this week I wished I had heard. Ugh. Gives me reason to pray. Gives me reason to go before God. Gives me reason to stay in constant communication for others. Lord, they need some help. Lord, what a situation. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Live in prayer. One step of holy living. Two steps. Now, there's more steps than this, folks. I just took five. Create a life that lives in God's Word. God's Word is the only righteous way to build a house grounded by its truth without God's revelation in the Bible. We'll never know what the will of God is for us and how Christ saved us from the guilt and the power of sin in our lives. Create a life that lives in God's Word. I had an individual reach out to me this week. And they're not from here, so don't don't be wondering if it was somebody. But they're from down the road a bit. And they were telling me, we used to go to this church. But we don't go to that church anymore. Because you couldn't even get to the pastor of the church. Because one, there's so many people there. And two, there was just so much around the guy. It was like almost like going to the secret service, seeing people around this guy, and he was always in and out. Of course, that was a big church. And like I said, I'm not naming names, not telling you where it's at. And I replied, I'm like, I'm glad you got away from that me-centric church, because I know that I, I know I know the teachings of this place. They they me-centric. What's me-centric? Me-centric is God is taking care of me, and because God's taking care of me. I can do whatever I want to do. That's bad teaching. <laughs> that's bad teaching. God loves me, and with His Holy Spirit and His precious Word, He can guide my life. And my life can be a reflection of his goodness. That's good teaching. That's good teaching. I was like, you need to get away from that dude. <laughs> dude. You need to create a life that lives in God's word. James 4, 6 through 8. 
that he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. And it goes on, it says, the humble, and it goes on, it says, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. There's a lot going on here. Create a life that lives in God's word. What does it start out with? But he giveth more grace. He giveth more undeserved favor. You know why? Because he gives us undeserved favor. He knows we're going to mess up because we still got flesh. We fall. So he goes into the circumstance thinking, all right, we're going to have stuff to work on. We're going to have stuff to work on. You know why you go to a class? You go to a class to learn something. You ever went to a class and the, cl and the teacher just expected you to know automatically everything was going on and then they started rubbing on you and bad mouthing you and getting you down the road? Didn't get much out of that, did you? Said Riley and Sarah this morning. I got two people waving their hands. Yeah. But have you ever had a teacher that had grace? You ever had a teacher that it was warm, it was forgiving, you had room to mess up? Yeah, thank you, right. You had room to mess up. You can learn from that. And that's what got, from the get-go, God's like, I'm going to give you grace. I'm going to give you grace. Then what happens? It says, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. First of all, he's giving you grace, and then he's going to weigh it out. Are you one of them there, brothers or sisters, better than you, and you need to get some stuff ironed out? Are you one of them brothers or sisters, Lord, help me be all I be for you? That's home, okay? So he's resisting the proud. What does it mean by resisting the proud? That means that little knockhead's going to come in here and try to act out, and I'm going to keep my eye on this one. And when that knockhead starts acting out, they're going to get redirected. But what does it say also? It says, but he giveth grace unto the humble. If you're humble, you give even more grace. There's even more grace. They're trying. They're really trying. I tell husbands this, try. Just try. Husbands, try. If you try, your bride will give you grace. All right? If you try with a sincere heart, I've seen it time and time again. They'll be like, well, at least he's working. At least he's doing something. At least he's out there. At least. Hear me now. Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee to you. Flee from you. Listen to that. Submit yourself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It's like it's like having a big old, big old stick. Buddy, if I can get my hands on that big old stick, buddy, I got something in my hand. I'm going, I got something to fight with. That's one reason I put that armor of God on the back page this week. God's given us implements to fight the devil. It's there. Armor of God. He's given us, he's telling us, submit yourself. Lord, help me, I need you. And while I'm submitting myself to God, Lord, I need you. Lord, I don't want to crawl back in that bottle I used to live in. Lord, I don't want to be hanging out with them heathens I used to hang out with. Lord, I don't want to be doing those evil things I used to do. I'm resisting the devil. And he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands. Woo, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Never really said much about this before. And I don't know how many people actually know this outside of Sarah, possibly James, in here. 
I don't like my fingernails to grow long. That drives me bananas. And why that drives me bananas, I don't like dirt under my nails, and I like feeling my fingertips. I type a lot, for one thing, and I like my fingertips. I grab stuff, I like my fingertips. My daddy, my daddy usually his fingernails grow long. Oh! Oh! And we're mountain folks, I don't care. He let that pink one grow out real long so he scraped inside of his ear. I know that was why he had that. Okay? That's just a thing for daddy. Alright? Daddy's dead in heaven. It's all good. He'll talk to me over your honor if it meant something. It's all good. Okay? Why am I talking about that? Cleanse your hands, you sinners. See, I want my hands clean. I don't want no dirt under my nails. I won't be able to feel my fingertips. I don't like stickies on my hands. And even in cold weather, I'm good until my hands get cold. Right. Then I ain't happy. As long as my hands ain't cold, it can be blowing hell and, 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 and sleet, and I'll be good. I don't care. These hands get cold. I get cranky, get irritable. I want my. I don't like cold hands. Don't like that. He's telling us to cleanse our hands and purify our hearts. Cleanse our hands. The things we grab, the things we pick up, the things we lay hold on to. Cleanse your hands. Purify your heart. What are you holding on to this morning? What are you holding on to? Are you holding on to joy? Are you holding on to grace? Are you holding on to forgiveness? Are you holding on to bitterness? Are you holding on to envy? Are you holding on to strife? You need to let that go. You need to let that go. You say, Tim, I can't let it go. That's why we pray. That's why we cleanse our hands. That's why we draw them out of God. Create a life that lives in God's Word. Here we go. Be extra good to God's people. People need each other for growth and sanctification. God uses elders, ministers, and older Christians in the diverse community of faith to be examples for us. And when I mean diverse community of faith, I mean sometimes it's the little kids doing it. I'm sometimes it's the preacher. Sometimes it's the singer. Sometimes it's the folks. They show up every now and then. He uses a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. Okay? A diverse community of faith to be examples for us, showing us the way to go and how to fight sin. We need each other more than we realize. And I underlined this and I put it in bold. John, this is one of the things I had to get over in my Christian life. No person is a rock or island. Before I fully committed my life to the Lord, I told people I was an island. I tell people that. It's me and I'm all right. I'll be okay. I'll be all right. You do what you want. I'm going to be all right. That's a lonely life. That's a hard life. You hold on to things on your island, like resentment, like bitterness. You got caves you can, you can ditch stuff in, like unforgiveness, like sorrow, like grief. We don't need to be an island. People can build their friends up or tear them down. There's two sets of verses here. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Be not deceived. If you run in your mouth, you need to stop running your mouth. Okay? James has heard me say this. What good is about to come from what you're about to say? If you're questioning yourself... Ask yourself, what good is what I'm about to say? How, what, how's this going to help? How's this going to promote? How's this going to correct? How's this, what, what good's about to come from this? Are you just trying to mow down something just for the sheer joy of mowing down? You need to watch out for that. <clears throat> we need to watch out for that. Evil communication corrupts good manners. 
If I sit here and tell you that I'm going to come to you in peace and love and joy and hope and forgiveness, and then about five minutes later, I'm blowing you out of the water because you don't vote like me or you don't act like me or you don't talk like me. I've lost any ability to help. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just burnt my witness. Be careful, please. Let us all be careful. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as ye see the day approaching. It gives joy to my heart when I see this congregation talking to one another and being friendly to one another and shaking hands and being glad to see one another. I have been in churches. I have been in workplaces. I have been in homes of people where you walk into that place and it's like walking into a core. It's cold. There is no joy. There is no hope. Nothing good going on here. And then I walk in, and, and God bless this church, and God bless you for making it. I ain't giving myself credit. Give God credit for one thing. Give y'all thanks for that as well. Because me and James, I, I had the church, I, sometimes two or three months back, we went out somewhere to this church. I looked at James, I said, my church friend, we're in this place. <laughs> now, I didn't stand up and say that for the whole congregation here, people around me. But that was what I said, Susan. I looked up at James and said, well, he's friendlier than this crowd. Mm -hmm. The only one shook my hand was a preacher, and he's the only one knew me. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. We are to provoke one another into love and to good works. I want you to pray more. I want you to read the Bible. I want you to forsake this flesh in this world. I want you to pursue God. You see? And if you do, you'll be blessed. You get rewards for that. You'll grow closer to God and you'll get blessings. That fruit of the Spirit that's on the back of the page will start growing. You'll start liking this stuff. Walk and dwell in faith. Step forward. So, Live in prayer, create a life that lives with God's word, be extra good to God's people, walk and dwell in faith. Walk and dwell in faith. Faith is a promise of God is necessary for strength, without sin, temptation, without the promises of the gospel. Any attempt at holiness is futile. Only faith in gospel promises strengthens us for the battle we face today. We have to walk and dwell in faith. I want you to consider faith to be your food. When you don't eat, you get weak. And if you like me, when you don't eat, sometimes they come up. They 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 came up with that term hangry, which is hungry and angry. You get grouchy. You get irritable. That happens. But if you treat your faith like food, Lord, I want this right here. I want my faith. I want to eat it daily. I want to pursue it daily. I want to have daily access to it. I want to be thinking about it. I want to be growing on it. I want it to grow me. My brother, James 1, 2 through 6. My brother, count all joy when you fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall in divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And I'm going to say something. I guarantee you, 
I'm going to start sounding like a, a commercial on one of them Hallmark or news networks right now. All right. Sarah, I love you. Love you. Um, you ever been bound up? You know what I'm talking about. You ever been constipated? You ever been locked up? You ever been in a place, your belly, it, it won't move. It won't move. You put stuff in it, stuff ain't going out. You get all knotted up, you get all hurting. You be like, man, I'm about to die up here. That's how patience is. Patience has a perfect work. Woo! Go get everything that you don't need in you out of you. You ain't locked up anymore. Lord, I used to have anger issues. You need to learn some patience. Lord, I used to hate waiting on my blessings. You need to have some patience. Lord, I don't know why this thing ain't worked out. I've been praying for this thing for a week, a month, a year. You need to have some patience. And he's going to work all that in you. And that thing that's locked you up spiritually, that thing that's blocked you up spiritually, that thing that's hurting you ain't making you healthy. All of a sudden, that stuff starts flowing one more time. You start flowing. And those things that keep catch you bound up might be bitterness, might be a lack of faith, might be hardship, might be suffering, might be something you ain't crazy dealing with. All of a sudden, God starts working that stuff out of you. Then you ain't bound up anymore. Woo! I go do jump jacks now. Life is good! Let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. I feel so much better now. Me and James have talked about this. There's a guy who said that, and the guy had nothing to do with theology, had nothing to do with religion, had nothing to do with the relationship with Christ. But he says every person, and I forgot the timeline, so I'll just say once a year, just to say once a year, for three days, you just drink water. You should just drink water three days. Clean out the toxins, clean out the chemicals, clean out the body. No food! Three days. Drink water. Three days. Drink water. You need to purify yourself. You need to cleanse yourself. It ain't easy to cleanse yourself. It ain't easy to purify yourself. That's why we need God! He's the only one that can do it. Walk and dwell in faith. The last one, become someone that practices righteous virtue. Go throw them big 50 cent words at you. Righteous virtue. Walking in the path of virtue trains the heart for future virtue. A heart that trains itself in holiness is strengthened by the Spirit to continue in the way of Christ, which temptation speak to our hearts. God sent His Son to free us from slavery to sin. Grow some holiness. Rejoice that sin no longer has power to rule over you since you belong to Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. James 2, 14. What does it profit the man, my brethren, though does that man say he hath faith and hath not works, can faith save him? The 26th verse. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. You want me to prove it to you? I'll prove it to you. Let's go all the way back. We got in the time machine. We went back in time. Okay? The year is 1998. Some, some of y'all ain't born. 1998. Kim, I'm never getting married. Never will happen. I'm Never get married. 1998. That ain't never will happen. 
here we are, 2023. Me and the bride over there, celebrating over two decades of the best two decades of her life. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the two best decades Sarah's ever had in her world. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because faith without works is dead. See, I was bound to turn not to get married. That wasn't going to happen. And then, fell in love, fell in love so sincere, somebody came up to me and said, if you can't live without this person, you know she's the one. And I thought to myself, that's the smartest thing that person's ever said. I wish that person would step, stop talking because she said some pretty stupid things since, and that's a whole other a whole other sermon. And I ain't saying who that person is either. That's the smartest thing that person probably ever said in their life. <coughs> yeah. I haven't seen nobody, man. It made sense to me. I can't live without that person. Let's do it. So I called her up on the phone and said, hey, let's get married. Ain't seen her in like five years. Hey, let's get married. <laughs> I've skipped a lot of contacts. And she's like, you skipped a lot of contacts. Mm -hmm. right. But I'm getting to the point. So, now when I was ready to get married in February 2001, 2000, 2000 love my wife. <laughs> when I was ready to get married in February 2000, I was like, we need to get married. I'm ready now. Let's do this. <laughs> we need to wait. <laughs> but I'm ready now. See, I'm ready now. Okay? So since I'm ready, we need to do this. But time. Some other stuff had to happen. Faith without works is dead. What am I saying? I had to come to the realization that I couldn't live with that individual. Then I had to come to the realization, had to ask the individual. Then I had to come to the realization, this wasn't my calendar to decide. But did I stop working? No. I kept calling. I kept saying cards. I kept telling her I love her. We kept building this relationship. Faith without works is dead. I'm on my way to heaven. That don't mean I stop serving the Lord. I'm on my way to glory. That don't mean I just sit back and just let this thing pass on by. Right. Faith without works is dead. We need to become someone that practices righteous virtue. I need the folks to know on the outside of that door that I'm a Christian and I want people to go to heaven. And I need them to have the evidence to say, I know it's so because... He does this, he does that, he acts this way, he talks this way. And then you create something, Susan, that I know of my generation and your generation, same generation, will pull each other together, that I don't know that's going on in the current generation, and that's called a reputation. And I think people don't give a rip about their reputation anymore on the other side of that door. People will know you how you act, how you talk, how you walk, who you hang out with, what you say, what you do. I want you to have faith and I want you to put works in that faith. I want you to help grow this church. I want you to help grow your own self spiritually. I want you to help you grow your own prayer life. I want you to be a light in your family, be a light in your neighborhood, be a light in your workplace, be a light online. I had a glory situation. Someone came visit me. I hadn't seen since 1988. And that individual came up and talked to me. He's like, I remember a conversation we had online from four years ago four years ago I can't tell you what I ate last week 
He's remembering conversation, hey, four years ago. Why? Because I was practicing righteous living. And I left a testimony with that person. And then four years later, that person comes up to me. I remember that conversation we had. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Five steps to holy living. Live in prayer. Create a life that lives in God's word. Be extra good to God's people. Walk and dwell in faith. And become someone that practices righteous virtue. Let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we love you. Lord Jesus, I need this in my life and I need it to grow. And Lord God, I want it to grow not only in my life, but my family's life and my congregation's life and the people around me's life. And Lord, let it all be just growing up and giving you glory. Lord Jesus, Lord, that being back here this morning needs salvation, let this be the day of salvation. Anybody need prayer for anything, let us come together and pray. Lord, it's so. Uh, please come.